Hey everyone, it's Fulton at Laser Loot Air Student Radio. This is once again Fulton's Music Room. Um, today is the 13th of October. Um, first day I recognized yesterday was Indigenous Peoples Day. Celebrate, learn, recognize the Indigenous and Tribal Land Keepers of where you, where you live, where you're from, everywhere you go. Um, with that being said, the easiest step is uh, just to reach out and look at what's around you and uh, recognize that the place that you're in meant something more to someone else before you. Anyways, with that uh, being started, this last week, first one listened to, Kendrick Lamar's 2017 album, Damn, pressed on red vinyl. It's very snazzy, um, a bit pop driven compared to his other albums, which are, you know, The Pimp a Butterfly, Jazzy, Fusion, um, Good Kid, Mad City, more straightforward, Section 80, more straightforward hip hop rap. Um, but you can, you know, feel those uh, tinklings of different things in there. Um, you know, this is the first vinyl, um, first record I ever bought. Um, it was online. It's the deluxe edition with um, an autograph on it somewhere on my wall. But um, yeah, this is what sparked my love for uh, vinyl. And I'm grateful to still have it. Um, yeah, definitely favorite uh, tracks on the album. Triple X, Feet U2, and of course, Love with Sakari. I've seen Kendrick uh, two times now. Doesn't disappoint. Um, great guy. One that I pulled that I'll probably listen to later, um, Anderson Pack's Malibu. Another album that I fell in love with around the same time as Damn. Um, what can I say about Anderson Pack? He is an amazing, he's talented, he sings, he plays drums, he does almost everything. Um, and now, to my knowledge, this album's like super rare now. Like, I bought this for 25 bucks, and now it's going for, like, over 50 and 60 on eBay and Discogs. Um, but but said, besides the point, it's a, it's a good album. It blends all these different fusion, soul, funk, all these different things into a more, like, precise hip-hop attitude. And this one, along with Ventura, or not Ventura, but um, Venice, which uh, was Anderson Pack Anderson Pack's album before this, um, was more electronic. I listened to... Uh, his newer albums, Ventura, and uh, I forgot the other name of the other one, but um, I just wasn't too impressed. Um, he, he was going in different directions than I anticipated, which kind of threw me for a loop, but nevertheless, he's a great artist. Um, I hope to see him someday. Up next, King Crimson, 80s Crim, um, Bruford, Baloo, Fripp, and Levin. Beat, their second album of the 80s, um, criticized by quite a few people, criticized by the band themselves as a point of extreme tension according to Sid Smith's uh, biography, the 50th anniversary. But um, honestly, it's like some great, intelligent 80s music. Um, the players are just massive. Tony Levin, first of all. He's playing with Peter Gabriel, David Bowie. The list goes on. Adrian Ballou, David Bowie, Frank Zappa, and now Robert Fripp, along with David Byrne, of course, um, of the Talking Heads. And I believe I said David Ballou, well, not Adrian Ballou, who knows. Anyways, and then of course you have Bill Bruford, the man himself. I'm reading his autobiography right now. Very interesting stuff, he's very opinionated, but um, he's already in King Crimson. Yes, Genesis, absolutely amazing lineup. And of course Robert Fripp, you know. You don't know prog rock, you don't know who Robert Fripp is. Personally, one of my favorite guitarists. Um, some standout tracks for me, of course. Um, Neil and Jack and me, Waiting Man, and of course, Two Hands and Neurotica. Um, it's something different from King Crimson. Um, Discipline embraced more of like the new wave, strange interlocking guitars. We get a, a refresher of that, but I believe it's more condensed and they tried to make it more poppy. I think this is mainly Adrian's um, input as regarded in Sid Smith's um, biography um, in the court of the Crimson King in observation over 50 years, which came out a couple years ago. Highly recommend the read if you're into King Crimson. Um, beat is, you're gonna have to start listening to Crimson. It's definitely one that you jump into later. Um, personally, if you're looking to get in Crimson, first album in the court of the Crimson King, Red, or Lark's Tongues and Aspic, and then Discipline, and then Thrak. Those are starting points for all these different areas of Crimson that you can explore, and Beat is definitely one of my favorites. Um, it's a hot take, but the the tensions, you know, it created something very unique, you know, you get 
the interlocking guitars, but you get more of a chordal um, idea and feelings from Adrian. Um, while Robert seems to be laying it down, even though his parts kind of got moved around. And then Bruford, he's just calm and composed behind the kit. And then same thing with Levin. Uh, the rhythm section is like, it's tight, but it feels sparse, but it's just enough for it. It's like fairy dusting, as Robert Fripp says, and it works really, really well. Anyways, once again, Parliament Funk, Parliament, Mothership Connection. I almost said Parliament Funkadelic. That's a merger of the two. George Clinton's Bad Boy. Um, debut album, first pressing. This is a funk essential for anyone who's looking to get into funk and all of that jazz. George Clinton is an absolute god when it comes to it. Um, even though I don't want to put that status upon him. Um, but yeah, personally, favorite song, Handcuffs. I'm going to put them on your mama. Um, the album really speaks for itself. If you haven't listened to it, go listen to it. Up next, Primus, Pork Soda. The album that really sparked my interest in them, mainly because it had My Name is Mud on it. One of their most popular songs ever. Um, this is from their 2018 re-releases a couple years ago. It's on gold vinyl, not real gold. It just looks like gold. It looks more like the gold on here, not like it's kind of bronzy. But, um, great album. You know, a lot of people say there's filler on Primus, but Pork Soda is definitely a complete effort, I think. Um, they're more of interludes. Uh, it's just a super fun album. You know, it's very 90s. It, I feel like it's almost the most country Primus goes at times. And then, as promised, I finally listened to Live Rust by Neil Young. Um, speaks for itself. Live Rust is one of my favorite albums of all time. Neil Young is one of my favorite artists of all time. A lot of love. That's, that's all we need right now. Um, and I just want to say, um, when it comes to Neil Young, a lot of people think, you know, oh, he's... He's all over the place. He's a he's a crazy guy, but um, he's always transitioning. He's always evolving. He's always doing things his way as an artist, which I think is really important in the industry. Um, that's that's my uh, clock going off. It's my old watch, and um, yeah, definitely an interesting cat. Um, Live Rust, I think, it exposes like the vulnerability of of Neil Young, and that reminds me, Pork Soda is definitely a really vulnerable Les Claypool. Anyways, up next, Asia by Steely Dan. Probably shown this one before, but nevertheless, a great album. The constructions of Fagan and Becker, along with the plethora of studio musicians, is absolutely amazing, if you ask me. Um, this is a first pressing, I believe. Got it from my dad. What a surprise. But, um, yeah, uh, it's there's something that Becker and Fagan tap into on this album, like they're goers to make it, which is another point of interest, but they tap into something very surreal and like very different, if you ask me. Um, they, for instance, Home at Last, like the opening, the opening keys, it puts you into this club that's, that's what is described in Deacon Blues. It's everything's cohesive, everything has a place and a, they tie back to each other and it's just an amazing album. There's things, it's, there's things I hear that I hear, you know, I'm like, wait, I didn't hear that percussion before. You know, if I sit at a certain angle with my speakers, I'm like, oh, I can, I can hear the, I can hear Don Fagan really touching those keyboards. But that's probably also just my cartridge setup. Um, anyways, yeah, great album. Definitely uh, a recommended starting place if you want to get into Steely Dan. Um, one of the greatest albums of all time. Um, not by my standards, but by uh, the media standards, which I am the media. <laughs> But um, yeah, it's an amazing album. Also, I don't know, but I'm just a nerd. Really enjoy the the inner the inner gatefold here. It's just like you know, Fagan and Becker just wanted someone to write about the album <laughs> on the inside. Um, yeah, definitely something unique. And then another one I'm I pulled to listen to later. <sighs> you guys are. I'm gonna find out. I'm a, I'm obsessed with quite a few bands, and I have a lot of the records. But um, Idols, a beautiful thing. Live at Le Palaclan. Horrible accident right there. That was appropriation. But um, yeah, Idols live album from last year. I remember buying this and getting in the mail, and this guy that lived across from me was like, "This isn't really my vibe." I'm like, "You can just leave." Um, but yeah, um, great songs on here. Um, it really replicates their live show well. Um, I saw them at the KXP Gathering Space as I've 
mentions before, and it's just amazing. Um, they're one of those bands that, you know, at the beginning of this video I recognized Native Land, and um, they're one of the few bands that is like speaking up about, you know, um, injustices in life, even though they're kind of like the, the chads or the surface level people of it. As I've said before, it's really important that they say these things. Um, yeah, and this is pressed on orange vinyl, I'll show you guys. There's the gatefold. It's kind of culty. Um, Idols has gone pretty culty, if you ask me. But the orange vinyl is really pretty. Um, it looks pink from the lighting in my room right now. But that's like neon. It's crazy. You can also see outside. There's my TV. Um, yeah, there's me. So yeah, that's all I've been listening to as of late. Um, and then another little update. Um, there will be a special edition of Fulton's Music Room releasing tomorrow. Um, featuring a band that was featured in here. Um, if you've watched the other videos, you can probably guess who it is. But it's just a special tribute to that band. Um, as I now own every official album of theirs on vinyl. And now I'm diving into getting every EP and every single of theirs. So... I'm a collector, as you can see, kind of eclectic. But um, yeah, hope everyone has a wonderful day. Of course, uh, this is Fulton at Laser Lou Air Student Radio. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy. You know, do what you do what you gotta do. Um, and uh, honor native land, of course. And my voice is losing me. Have a wonderful day, people.